we have this new project, we're going to want to create some parts for it. So we're going to create add new schematic library. This is where we're going to hold all of the um, components, resistors, ICs, capacitors, inductors, everything we need. I know this says component one right now. One way to do it is by using the default Altium libraries. If you click on this libraries button, you can see there's a bunch of parts in here. Um, but we're going to want to create our own because uh, this helps us really understand what the part is re referencing to. Um, we can have an exact data sheet for it. We can have all the part um, parameters. Uh, and we'll be able to generate a really nice bill of materials at the end with the exact part we need and with uh, the cost and links to, to, to purchase and everything. So if you go to digikey.ca, we're looking for a 555 timer. So any 555. And we're going to want to select, we don't want a development board. We don't want transistors right now. Uh, we want integrated circuit. So get this guy. And when you're trying to pick uh, an IC, most important part is to make sure that your minimum quantity is at one. If you accidentally select an IC that has a minimum quantity of 2,500, although the, the cost per IC is cheaper, you're gonna have to pay, if you buy at least 2,500 of these to be able to um, pay this price. So we're gonna need one with a minimum quantity of one. Uh, and I wanna pick a cheaper one, so if I can reorganize this by unit price, you can see the really cheap ones if you if you buy a lot of them. But we're looking for a minimum quantity of one. Great, so 56 cents. And notice that it does have quantity available. It's another important metric we need to check. You can click on this one. I can just grab the part number here. There's a little copy. Back to Altium. And what I'm gonna do now is go on this bottom right corner, hit panels, and then look at part search. And uh, you can see I've already been looking for this one, but if I paste it, can see a catalog of all the NE555 parts that Altium knows about. It's kind of the internet itself. Um, so it also tell me the supplier. Uh, let's put it in here. Arrow, Avnet, Allied, Mouser, Digikey. So if I hit this Digikey one, I scroll down. I just want to make sure that the minimum quantity is one. See, that's great. So if I click this one, for example, minimum quantity is 2,500. You can tell right here. So minimum quantity one looks good. Uh, right click, import into skillib1, so that's our schematic library. So now we have this part in here, NE555. If I click on it, double click, the properties will show up on the right. Um, and we have this general tab, but there's also the parameters tab. And because we were able to import it through this part search, all the parameters of the part are inside here without us having to manually enter all of these, which is really handy. Um, down here on the on the bottom left is where we can choose what we want to be working on. You can look at the schematic library filter, the navigator for documents, or the projects tab, which is basically where you see your file browser. So you can see that we created this new schematic library, but it's not yet saved. So I'm going to right click and save this. Um, and it's in the 555 tutorial uh, folder, which is good. So I'm just going to call it uh, schematic. Library. Save. Cool. And then I'm just going to resave my whole project. So now, if we go to Git Bash, I can say something like check its status first. Okay, we've seen some things have changed. The history has changed. Um, and also, we've added this new project file. Sorry, this new uh, schematic library file. So, git add all. Git commit. So, it gets status again just to make sure. Great. All green. I can say git commit dash m added schematic. Library to project. Cool. Good push. And you don't have to push every single time. Um, you can, as long as you're committing, you can push them all at the end if you'd like. Uh, I'm just pushing now so it's clear to see here. This keeps getting updated. And you'll see there's a, there'll be another dot for another commit here. Let's see, add a new project file, or added schematic library to project. So if we go back to schematic library, look at our components. What we want to do is just to make it look nice when we put it in the schematic, we're going to double click this and to turn off the visibility. And then in general, we're going to give it a designator. So with integrated circuits, we usually have a U. 
And uh, like for resistor, we'd use an R, for capacitor, we use a C. And we're going to put a little question mark. Um, this will allow us to annotate our schematics really nicely later on. Um, if we initialize all the reference designators with a question mark, then we can hit one button and it'll auto generate all the numbers. So if we had multiple ICs, we could have U1, U2, U3, U4, U4 um, and the Altium will automatically do that for us. In the comments, we're going to put the manufacturer part number. So if I hit parameters, um, the manufacturer part number, notice before we had the digikey part number. And you need the manufacturer one because this the, the digikey part number is only sp specific to digikey. Uh, the manufacturer part number is more general. Cool. So if I hit enter, that should be good. Now we want now we want to uh, create the actual schematic symbol for it with our pins and our proper rectangles. Um, so what we can do is if we go back to DigiKey and select the data sheet, we'll be able to see exactly what the the IC should look like in a schematic. So if I scroll down a little bit, let's look for a, a circuit diagram. Sounds good, but we want the this one should be good. We're going to use it in a stable operation. So it's basically going to be able to generate these pulses for us to turn on and off our LED that's connected to this output. So I'm just going to copy almost exactly this um, symbol. So I'm going to create all these pins, the right numbers and the right names, and then also this rectangle as well. So let's start with the ground pin. So I'm going to say place pin. And if I hit tab, I hit tab right now, I can change the parameters of the pin right here. So the name is uh, ground and the designator was pin one, is that right? Yeah, ground is pin one. I can hit enter. And now I have the pin on my mouse and I can hit space if I want to rotate it 90 degrees. Uh, in our case, let's just double check, it was pointing downward. So just keep it down like this. And Altium will automatically move to the next pin and increment the number for you as well, which is really handy. Um, so I'm not pressing anything right now, it's not holding any buttons. It's just on my mouse. So if I hit tab again, I can change the name and the designator already incremented. Pin two is trigger, so let's go trigger. Hit space, 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 so like this maybe. Pin three, it was pin three. Three's output, out. Pin four, reset. Pin five is can't. And if I if I take this um, pin and I start moving it towards the right, Altium will automatically start scrolling to the right for me, or to the left, or up or down, if I need to move. Um, can't was up here, I think. Right there. Uh, pin six was threshold. Thresh. Threshold, thresh. Press, sorry. Tab again. Press. Cool. Let's go here. Pin seven was discharge. Discharge. And pin eight was VCC. VCC. Cool. So now I have all my pins, but I'm missing a nice box around them. So what I'm going to do is place rectangle, and I'm going to put it right here. So when I'm placing the rectangle, I'll do it again. I basically get to select the bottom left corner to select it, and then I get to choose the top right corner as well. I'm going to choose somewhere around here, maybe this one. And to place it, the last corner, I'm going to left click, and then now Altium is thinking that I want to add another rectangle, but I'm okay with just the first one. So I'll right click to exit this command. So now I have this rectangle. It's looking good, but it's actually covering all of my pin names, and that's it's not very handy. So what I'm going to do is send this to the back. So I'll say edit, move, send to back. And now the send to back command is on my mouse, and whatever I click will be sent towards the back. So if I click this rectangle, now it's sent to the back, and all my pin names come up front. And you can right click to exit this command, or you can press escape, both will work. Cool, now that I have this, I'm just gonna center this ground pin. Maybe move cont in a little bit in VCC, decrease my rectangle size. So I want my rectangles to be right on the edge of the pin. 
And when you're when you if I click the pin and move it, sorry, this is this rectangle. If I click the pin and move it around, you can see that um, the point with this big cursor and the little X in the middle is the point that has the electrical connection. So when I'm putting that in my schematic, this is the end that will actually be connected to the um, to the routing lines and the traces that I place, not the other end. So you need to be careful to make sure this end is on the outside of the rectangle. If I accidentally flip it and I put it something like this, then this side will not have any electrical connectivity. It'll only be this side. So if I click and hold, press space twice and move it back, it should be good. Cool, let's save this. Uh, let's commit but not push just yet. Get status. Get add A. Get commit M added. Fire, 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 schematic symbol.